does the M1A2 Abrams compare to the T14 Armada? Well, the T14 Armada and the M1A2 Abrams are two of the world's most advanced and deadliest main battle tanks. Even though some things about these tanks are kept in high secrecy, we do know a lot about these machines and we're gonna compare between the two today. So stay tuned guys and do not go anywhere. The M1A2 Abrams main battle tank is a further development of the M1A1 tank. It is a third generation American main battle tank and is considered to be now one of the heaviest tanks in service. The T14 Armada, however, is a next generation Russian main battle tank based on the Armada Universal Combat Platform and is the first series produced next generation tank. The M1A2 Abrams is operated by a crew of four, including a commander, gunner, loader and a driver. The T14, however, is operated only by three crew, including just a commander, gunner and a driver. The unit cost of M1A2 Abrams is 6.21 million US dollars, which nearly doubles that of the Armada, which costs only about 3.7 US million dollars. As for the dimensions, the Abrams is a little bigger compared to the Armada except its height. Their length measures 9.77 meters and 8.7 meters and their width measures 3.7 meters and 3.5 meters and their height measures 2.4 meters and 3.3 meters. Although their sizes are almost the same, but the M1A2 is far heavier than the T14. The Abrams is 15 tons heavier than the Armada. Now let's talk about power. The Abrams is powered with Honeywell AGT 1500 gas turbine which produces an output of 1500 horsepower and is equipped with Allison DDAX 1103B transmission. The T14 Armada, however, is powered with a CHTZ 12 and 360 diesel engine delivering up to 1500 to 2000 horsepower and has a 12-speed automatic gearbox transmission. The M1A2 can travel at a maximum on-road and off-road speed of 67 km per hour and 40 km per hour, while the Armada can go up to 90 km per hour and 33 km per hour. The Abrams therefore has an advantage in the cross-country performance. The Abrams has an operational range of 426 km, while the Armada has an operational range of 500 km. So overall, in terms of engine power and mobility, both tanks have their own strengths and weaknesses. Defense experts consider the T-14 Armada to be more agile than the Abrams due to its superiority in power to weight ratio. The Abrams measures 24 horsepower per ton, while the T14 measures 31 horsepower per ton. Now, apart from all those general performance, let's have a look at a more important feature. The M1A2 Abrams' main armament is the 120mm M256A1 smoothbore. It is accurate and has a range of effective fire in excess of 4 km. Secondary armament includes a 50 caliber M2HB machine gun and a 7.62mm M240 machine gun. The Armada's main armament is the 2A82 1M 125mm smoothbore cannon with 45 rounds. It has more muzzle energy than the gun of the Abrams. Its secondary armament includes a 12.7mm cord machine gun and a 7.62mm PKTM machine gun. So far, it is unclear how accurate is the gun of the Russian Armada in order to compare with the M1A2 Abrams. Now comes armor and protection. The Abrams is protected by Shobom Composite Armor. Protection of the M1A2 was improved by using the plated uranium mesh at the front of the hull and turret. It offers significant protection against all known anti-tank weapons, however overall weight increased comparing with the M1A1. The composite armor consists of sandwiched plates of non-explosive reactor armor between conventional steel plates. Protection of the M1A2 Abrams is considered as one of the best in the world. 
Now, as for the T-14's crew of three, however, they are protected by an internal armored capsule with more than 900mm rolled homogeneous armor equivalent. Both the chassis and the turret are equipped with the Malachi Dual Explosive Reactor Armor System on the front, sides, and top that can reduce penetration of APF SDS and heat rounds by at least 50%. So overall, in terms of protection, none of these two tanks have an advantage over the other. Talking about crew survivability. Interior of the Abrams is lined with Kevlar liner for protection against spalling. Four crews inside are very much well protected and has some chances of surviving even when the armor is penetrated by weapons. Most of the ammunition is stored in a turret bustle with blowout panels. The bustle is separated from the fighting compartment, and if the bustle is hit, ammunition detonates without killing the crew. Some rounds are stored inside the hull in protective containers. Looking at the Russian Armada, three of its crew members are seated in a well-protected armored cell, increasing their chance of survival in case of a catastrophic kill. This tank has completely unmanned turret with such crew layout. The crew is completely separated from automatic loader and ammunition, and it has improved resistance to damage and can operate even with penetrated armor as far as the crew cell is still intact. So overall, I believe the Russian Armada might be slightly superior in terms of crew survivability due to its protected crew cell in entirely isolated ammunition. The American M1A2 Abrams entered service in 1992 and there are thousands of them. A number of these tanks were exported to many countries such as Australia, Egypt, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and so on. It has proven combat in many wars like the Persian Gulf War, Iraq War, War in Afghanistan, Iraqi Civil War and many more. Furthermore, only a few of these tanks were ever destroyed. So the Abrams deserves reputation as being one of the best tanks in the world. On the other hand, the Russian T-14 Armada is a new clean sheet design that is still being developed, improved and tested. It first entered service in 2015 and only a small batch of pre-production tanks was built. It has never proven combat yet, but based on few sources, Russia is preparing to launch a full-scale production of these tanks and these productions could begin in just a few years from now. Well, basically, the Abrams has an advantage of being proven in a reliable design that performs well during various military conflicts. So, what about the overall performance? Who wins here? Overall, I believe the new Russian tank is on par with the US Abrams tank. In some areas, it is slightly superior than the Abrams, however, it has got no cutting-edge superiority. The Abrams has technical superiority in cross-country performance, and this tank is a proven design that recommended itself well during numerous military conflicts. The Armada has an advantage of survivability and crew protection, but this tank is still a raw design that is likely to have numerous teething problems. So what are your thoughts guys, who do you think wins here? Do comment down in the comment section below and please share this video if you've enjoyed it and thank you so much for viewing and until next time, bye bye.